Hi all, the purpose of this video is to go over LC oscillators. Our learning goal and objective is to know and understand why an LC oscillator is a simple harmonic oscillator. Okay, so if we start off with an LC oscillator like this, and we do Kirchhoff's law, around starting at this point going around so what we'll do is we will have the voltage across the capacitor plus the voltage across the inductor being equal to zero and then if we write the voltage for the capacitor which is the charge on the capacitor Q or its capacitance C plus uh, the voltage across the inductor which is the inductance L times di dt and then that's equal to zero. So now what we need to do is we need to write all this down in terms of one variable. So we have charge Q and current I. And we can remember that the current is equal to, uh, oh, sorry, went too far ahead. The current <clears throat> is going to be equal to the time derivative of the charge on the capacitor. So we can put that into here. So we'll have Q over C plus L D D T of D Q D T and that equals to zero. So now we'll have Q over C plus L D two Q D T two equal to zero. And then we'll rewrite this in terms of how you would see a simple harmonic oscillator equation. So the second derivative of one variable, which is a function of time, plus uh, one over LC Q equal to zero. So from the solution, so the harmonic oscillator equation is D2 F of T D T2 plus omega squared F of T equal to zero. So anything that has of this form, which this does, uh, what's multiplying the f of t, so in this case it's q, that's q of t. So this is our omega squared. So now our omega is going to be one over the square root of LC. So what's pretty cool about this is remember that a capacitor stores energy and the electric field and an inductor stores energy and Oh, sorry, a capacitor stores energy in the electric field, an inductor stores energy in the magnetic field. When you put these two together, what you get is something that stores energy uh, at one point in time in the electric field and then sloshes it over to the magnetic field and it keeps going back and forth. And what this ends up being is this ends up being a circuit model description of light. So the resonance frequency or the color of light that you would see is equal to one over the square root of the inductance times the capacitance. So another neat thing is we can uh, write back our LC oscillator, LC, and then we can look at the, uh, the total, um, whatchamacallit, Im impedance. So our Z total, since these two are in parallel, is going to be equal to 1 over 1 over Z L plus 1 over Z C. So we're a Z total. 1 over 1 over negative I omega L plus 1 over I over omega C. And then uh, our Z total is going to be equal to 1 over. 1 over minus I omega L plus omega C over I. Now, what we can do is we can write this in terms of the admittance. So uh, when we looked at uh, fluid through pipes, so the conductance G, that was just equal to 1 over the resistance in, in terms of impedance and admittances. So the admittance, usually written as y, is equal to 1 over z.
Um, so all we have to do is take this and do one over that. Uh, so we just take everything, raise it to the negative one. So this is going to be the total admittance. And now we just end up with one over minus I omega L plus omega C over I. Um, and what we have to do is we have to find where this equals to zero um, because then that'll tell us where the resonant frequency is. So if we have one over minus I omega L plus omega C over I, then we can rewrite that as uh, omega C over I equals to one over minus I omega L. So now what we can do is get our omegas on one side, our I's on the other, and then uh, we'll be able to solve for this. So, all right, and then there's a negative here because I moved it over. So this will end up being omega squared equals to one over LC. The I's ended up canceling, the negative signs canceled. So I over I is one, omega times omega is omega squared. So omega equals the one over the square root of LC. So once again, we find that the resonant frequency is one over the square root of LC. Um, this is pretty cool because this is the way why looking at the uh, impedance or admittance um, makes it so you know where the resonant frequency is. So I chose to look at where the admittance was equal to zero. We could have equally looked at seeing where the impedance ended up being infinity because one over infinity equal to zero. So these are sort of just two sides of the same coin. This was a little bit easier to see, a little less mathy, but it's pretty cool because by looking at the impedance or the admittance, you get to know where your resonance frequencies are. All right, thank you very much.